we welcome Jay Christensen to the podcast this week. And we have a very long history and he's a fellow athletic trainer himself. And yeah, what's how's everything going during these situations and what what have you been up to? Andrew, it is really great to talk to you, man. I, it's uh, I think probably like everybody else, just trying to endure and um, get uh, you know be safe and get through it. Hopefully, uh, sooner than later, right? So we yes, hope. of course. And yeah. <laughs> we, we have we have you on the podcast. It's a you're a very interesting guest because you are an athletic trainer, just like I am in a non-traditional athletic training setting. But your your athletic training setting is probably one of the few very, very exciting and you travel more than any other athletic trainer that I know. So can you give us a little little snapshot of what it is that you do and where you work for and what that has been like in the past recent several years? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I guess the very short version of it is that uh, I work for a very large company called Feld Entertainment, um, who was contracted through Marvel, uh, yes, the superheroes, right, to uh, produce a live touring stunt show, stage show. So uh, these are the same people that it produced uh, through the Walt Disney Company, uh, Disney on Ice, and a various slew of other live performing shows. Uh, Marvel has decided that to broaden their brand and increase the, uh, I guess, love for these characters, they uh, have, for the last several years, produced a live touring uh, show that has traveled domestically and internationally uh, that I've been very fortunate to be a part of for the last, uh, last couple years. So on that show, I serve and act as the uh, athletic trainer for that show. And my uh, air quotes team, if you will, is comprised of about 150 people. They mm-hmm. make up the cast, crew, and staff that all make that, uh, that show possible. Yes, and where where have you before all of this COVID nineteen hit? Where were you last? Uh, I was in South Africa, um, <laughs> in Pretoria, South Africa, for uh, almost a month. There, we were we were uh, having a great time. <laughs> yes, and I'm assuming you're back in the U.S. now. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, as it, as fate would have it, uh, at the time of recording, I should have been just returning uh, back home to Hawaii. Actually, as it were, we had initially planned a six to seven week uh, trip to Australia and we would have traveled to five or six different uh, cities and within Australia had just finished uh, and would have taken some probably much needed uh, time off uh, on the island. But uh, as you mentioned and kind of alluded to this whole uh, COVID-19 thing has kind of put a damper on now almost everything, hasn't it? Goodness. Yes, every everything's on hold right now. And I mean, it's unfortunate, but, you know, we all have to do our part. And I think everyone's pitching in and understanding why this is necessary. But for all of for these sure. things like the enter- entertainment industry, sports industry, everything's on hold now. And it's really what kinds of things can we do even when we get back to normal living? What kinds of things can we do to help to make sure that our athletes can perform? We do have a long history because you are actually my classmate. We're in the same cohort together. And yeah. I was just thinking back, it's been seven years since we were certified. It doesn't seem like that long at some times, but in another way, it has been a long seven years because we both have done a lot of different things. And for you, let's share a little bit about what kinds of settings you've been you've been, you've experienced, you've been working at and kind of how you got to this current job where you're traveling with all these road shows that you're doing. (laughs) Yeah, it's been a journey. You're not wrong. Seven years seems like a long time, but as you alluded to it, it seems to have gone almost, you know, overnight. I I remember graduate school like it was yesterday. Uh, So if we rewind all the way back, Uh, I'm actually quite proud of the fact that um, I started out in a very non-traditional setting in that um, I reached out and started working with the professional surfing tour when they were on island uh, on North Shore. And I had such a great experience with that. It had nothing to do with a negative experience in the high school or collegiate setting, but it was just something different. And I thought, man, like this is something I really enjoy. Having your office on the beach wasn't terrible either, right? But uh, being able to interact with these athletes that – uh, just genuinely like that was so consuming to them. That was their life. And they were doing everything possible to participate and compete. 
that very early on struck me as, okay, this is the demographic. These are the type of people I want to work with because they want desperately to, uh, to be good and to not only be good, but be successful. Right. Um, so that led me to, you know, finish, um, working on the Island, I guess, and, and move to the mainland uh, for many other reasons. But, um, I moved to the Bay area of California and had a really great opportunity to work in major league soccer. Um, it started as an internship, which was amazing just to get the opportunity. And, uh, you know, for those listeners of your podcast, you're, they're keenly aware and familiar with your experience with internships. Uh, and while my envy with you working in Detroit and working with the Lions uh, was exceptional and, and really big, I also did not envy the really uh, cold fall and winter that you experienced. Out there. Yeah. So um, my... Uh, my internship with San Jose in the Bay Area of California proved to be something that was uh, really kind of a pivotal moment for me in that uh, I had such a great opportunity to be exposed to a different um, approach in athletic training, a different setting entirely as far as how they treated their athletes and um, the kind of, for lack of a better term, the hype that comes along with that. But then also uh, the, the not politics, but the comings and goings and the, the wheels that are turning behind the scenes that maybe everyone doesn't always see. Um, yep. Major League Soccer uh, actually was a really good opportunity because that internship turned into an opportunity where the GM pulled me in and said, hey, we're really grateful and, and happy with what you're doing. If it's all the same to you, we'd, we'd like to pay you, which I put up no fight and no objection to. And I uh, did, did a full season with them, and it was great. Um, that, to, I guess, not drag this out really long, transition to an opportunity to work at a, at a high school there, a level. Um, it was as a result of interviewing with, uh, uh, through the NBA, I looked at kind of trying to work with the uh, D-League for the Golden State Warriors and their team mm -hmm. in Santa Cruz. And I made it quite far in the interview process only to uh, have a conversation with the, the head guy there and he encouraged me to work more as the head athletic trainer position and i had so much experience uh, assisting or you know working as an intern or other spots um that at that point that was what was really glaring on my resume so i worked at the high school level for several years and then um if i'm honest uh linkedin played a really large part in my progression yes. from there i plugged in my resume and was updating it and um Marvel reached out and I ticked all the boxes they were looking for. And uh, as they say, the, the rest is history. So you, here I am. Yes. And I mean, you have one of the rare positions, I think, because you're working with not only in a non-traditional setting that you're traveling all the time, but it's also with a rare group of athletes. And I, I really think that they're one of the most athletic people or population that there is in sports because of the things that they have to do. And I mean, just the practice schedule and everything, but to share a little bit more about that, is it is it what you expected now that you've been doing this for a few years? Is it what you thought it would be and how has it been similar or different? You know, it's funny because now, it because I've had this conversation, it seems very normal, right? To see some guy fall like 20 or 30 feet and, and not, <laughs> not get hurt it seems yeah. very normal to me. Guys are getting punched and kicked and girls are getting thrown across the stage and, you know, just dying if you will you know and, and <laughs> that that part seems very normal which is obviously not <laughs> is it what i expected no not even close um i don't know that any amount of preparation can prepare you to see uh you know the better part of 40 plus people choreographed fighting and mm -hmm. running around and and riding because i mean I, whether we get into this or not we have motorcycle riders riders and aerialists they're gymnasts and martial artists parkour athletes, circus performers, and I could go on and on and on with all the different sub subcategories of athlete we have. So you're absolutely right. They're wildly diverse and incredibly athletic. And it is very normal now, but I, I can't imagine walking into that expecting uh, what I live with every day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I think it's never boring for you. It's always something different every day. Um, yeah. But the routine, it's still, you're working like an athletic trainer. And I think you briefly mentioned that, you know, you until you get, you, you're in these situations, you don't get to see all the behind the scenes. So right. like even when you were in uh, professional soccer, now when you're with Marvel, and even when I was at Detroit, you don't get to see all of the behind the scenes. It's kind of equivalent to, I think for the average person, we don't get to see what goes on behind 
a movie set or filming a live event. You know, we don't understand all the ins and outs, but there are a lot of things that happen behind the scenes.